There's two things we need to know about snacks. Okay, one, the timing of them is everything. If you do want to have a snack, you have to time it properly. But secondly, if you just stack your snack alongside your meal, a lot of times you're better off than having a snack in between meals. Let's break it down. Hopefully this is going to help you get over that little plateau that you're in so that you can really start breaking down those barriers. Hey, do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then after that hit the bell icon. And then after this video, check out Natural Heaven Pasta. They're a big supporter of this channel, so a big thank you to them, but they're also just this awesome product, okay? They are a hearts of palm pasta. They have spaghetti noodles, they have angel hair pasta noodles, they have lasagna noodles, and it's all made from one ingredient which is hearts of palm. So entirely keto friendly, very, very delicious and super universal. I make all kinds of like keto dad dishes, which I am not a good cook and I can utilize this stuff and make it so easy. So anyhow, there's a special link, also 15% off if you use the link down below, that way you can get special Tom Stillauer pricing so you don't get it anywhere else. You can get it right through here, support this channel, support them and get yourself something that is awesome for your lifestyle. So check them out after this video. So I want to clear something up really quick with snacking that I've talked about before. Every time you consume something, you are disrupting fatty acid oxidation. Okay. Now you're supposed to consume things we're designed to eat. Okay. But we have to give ourselves strategic periods of time between meals so that we can actually start utilizing the food we're consuming and even better utilizing the fat that is stored in our bodies. The longer that we go between meals, the more we tap into our fat stores. It is that simple. The longer between breakfast and lunch, the more that we tap into fat, the longer between lunch and dinner, the more we tap into fat, the longer between dinner and breakfast, the more we tap into fat, but we can't just increase the length progressively between each meal. Otherwise our, our meal times would be completely staggered, right? So we'll talk about that in a second. The point is, is when you consume food, you have an insulin spike. And after that, insulin levels come down and glucagon comes up, which signals a lot of our fatty acids to get liberated. And it's during that valley that we need to be able to make sure we're not eating. One single peanut will disrupt that. But here's an interesting study talking about snack timing. If you do decide to have a snack because we are human and of course we're going to snack. The American Journal of Physiology published this paper. Okay. It took two groups of individuals that ate the exact same thing, the exact amount of calories and had very similar lifestyles. Okay. Okay. Then they gave them a snack, a 200 calorie snack. Both groups got a 200 calorie snack. One group got a 200 calorie snack at 10 AM and the other group got a 200 calorie snack at 11 PM. What was wild, the group that had the 200 calorie snack at 11 PM overall, not just that day, overall had significantly lower levels of fatty acid oxidation. What the heck? I mean, they both had the same snack. One just had it in the morning, one had it in the evening, but what's going on here? What happened is they shortened that precious period between dinner and breakfast where we normally have at least like an eight hour gap when we're not eating. Well, they took that, you know, at least eight hour gap and probably made it down to seven or so. Whereas the group that had the snack in the earlier part of the day, they had at least eight hours, probably more like nine, 10, 11, 12 between their meals. So here's what happens. If I can kind of illustrate it for you, the longer that we go between meals, the faster the fat loss occurs later on, right? So, if we have two hours between meals, we might burn a little bit of fat. If we have three hours between meals, we burn even more fat. If we have four hours between meals, we burn even more, but it gets exponentially more accelerated the longer that we go on. So when we have a snack in the evening and we ultimately eat later and we shorten that overnight fasting period, we are shortening the most precious, most powerful fat burning time that we could have. And it's not because we are burning fat while we're sleeping. We're definitely not that much. Okay. But what we are doing is we're breaking down and shortening that a period of time that allows us to upregulate those fat burning enzymes, those transporters like CD36 and CPT1 and all these things that are, you know, carnitine palmitoyl transferase, which we need. Okay. Complicated stuff. But the point is, is 
when you have your snack matters. So what I want you to do and what I challenge you to do is, well, first of all, try not having snacks altogether. Or if you're gonna have a snack food, have that snack food at the very end of your meal. Okay, so like, let's say you really got some delicious keto cookies and you wanna have them as a snack. Well, having them as their individual snack on their own is probably one of the worst things you could do. Just suck it up and have it along with your meal. Have your keto lunch and say, I'm gonna have a cookie with it. Even if it means that that meal is a little bit bigger. I can sincerely say in my own anecdotal experience and in thousands of clients that I've worked with over the years, it is better off to have a slightly larger meal and have a very clear time period in which you are not eating than it is to have a slightly smaller portion and then have a little snack, okay? Because it doesn't take much to disrupt the fat burning process in between a meal. So if you wanna have a snack, have it with your meal. And if you are absolutely adamant about having a snack that is not with a meal, have it stacked earlier in the day so that you can stop eating once again, like a broken record, Thomas sounds, at like five or 6 p.m. so that your fast is longer overnight. Little tricks that you implement into your life that are actionable and pragmatic like this are what are going to make up the bulk of your success. I promise you that. See you tomorrow.